Now, in answer to this question here itself, what you've got here is a description of what God did in the past, not an example of what Christians should do in the present. When we Christians go out and evangelize, we're not asking people to follow the covenant of Moses, are we? We're asking people to follow the covenant of Jesus. Yeah. And our Lord doesn't do this, right? The other thing is, the other thing is that this this particular scripture about the Amaleks, right? Is is it, it's like it's like war rhetoric. Do you know what I mean by war rhetoric? Yeah, it, like during war. So. Yeah, you you hype up what you're going to do to your enemies, right? right? You know, you, you don't encourage Marines to go out and storm a beach by saying, right, guys, I want you all to be gentle and kind and remember to fight fairly. Can you imagine a battle speech like that? No, you say things like, we're going to go in there, we're going to smash them to pieces, we're going to destroy them. We're going to, do you see my point? Yeah, I see. And so there is a war rhetoric going on in this passage. Because the Amaleks, if you just keep reading, they're still there, right? They're not destroyed, they're not wiped out, okay? The other, the other thing that, the other thing, so that, that's two things to remember about this. One, it's, it's a description, not a prescription, right? Now the reason why that distinction is important is because when Muhammad had sex with a child or Muhammad allowed his followers to rape or Muhammad raped himself or Muhammad had people murdered, that is an example for Muslims today. It's the best example today. But Christians don't go and say, be like Saul, do we? We don't go out. When have you ever met a Christian who's gone, you should be like Saul? Has anyone ever done that? No. Who do they say you should be like? Jesus. Exactly. So the, 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 the example that we should follow is Jesus. We're comparing Jesus to Muhammad. We're not comparing Saul to Muhammad. The reason why Muslims want to shift the debate onto a comparison between Muhammad and Saul, bearing in mind that the story about Saul, he's a sinner. He's someone who fails. He's someone who doesn't follow God's command. He's the bad guy of the story. So the best Muslim is only as good as the worst Jew. Yeah. Which is something to think about, right? So they're comparing their best Muslim to the worst example of a Jew, but we're comparing the best example of a Jew, Jesus Christ, to the best example of a Muslim. And it's, it's, as, like, it's, yeah, it's as like night and day, who you want to follow. Someone who permits child marriage, someone who permits polygamy, someone who permits rape of female captives, someone who permits sex with children, or someone who teaches us that we should love and hope and have faith in one another. And, and this is how you reply to that. The only reason why this is even remotely scandalous to you yeah. is because of the success of Jesus' teaching. Because Jesus' teaching has influenced us that we should not behave like that and we should find it wrong. But here's the thing. Mahadimid himself in the hadiths is committed to a similar genocide. He says that he desires to force out all the Jews and all the Christians from the Arabian Peninsula. That's, that's a genocide that he's talking about. So they're talking about this to try and scandalize you about the Bible, but they're not telling you the fact that Muhammad commits himself to the same thing to drive out all Jews and Christians from the Arabian Peninsula until none remain but the Muslims. That's from Muhammad's own mouth according to the Hadiths. Okay. Right? So if they're saying that it's wrong here, why is it right when Muhammad does it? Yeah. Do you see my point? Yeah, I see your point. Yeah. So, so, so my point to you is that, that, that if they're saying it's wrong, why, why does Muhammad do the same? So when he destroys the, the Kaiba Jews, he enslaves all the women and he has all the men and all, all, all he enslaves all the women and children and has all the men killed. And he destroys the Kaiba Jews that way. And Muslims celebrate that amongst themselves, but then to Christians like you who don't know about that, they say, how, how can you follow a God that does this? 
Do you get my point? Yeah. So he's working on your ignorance. He's work. He's preying on the fact that you don't know anything about Islam to try and scandalize you, not according to Muslim standards, but to scandalize you according to Christian standards. Christian standards that are built on Jesus. What about the people that live before Jesus? Who do they follow? Uh, the, the, it depends who they are. So if they're Jews, they obviously follow the prophets. The, the Jews are all in the covenant of Moses. And so they follow the Mosaic covenant. And that covenant is modulated and it's, it's slightly changed as it goes on. But all Jews up to the time of Christ are following the Mosaic covenant. Then Christ comes and he establishes a new covenant. And the reason why it's a new covenant is because now Gentiles can get involved in a way that the Mosaic Covenant is just for the Jewish people. Yeah? yeah, yeah. You okay? Yeah. Does that answer your question? Yeah, it does, yeah. Yeah, and, and that's the trick that, that the people like Mansour is a total coward because Mansour runs from every knowledgeable Christian in this park. Yeah, I told him you were here and he said he didn't want to speak. Exactly. <laughs> they run from us. Every knowledgeable Christian in this park Mansour runs from. He won't debate any of us. He looks for people like you who can't answer his questions. It wasn't actually Mansour, it was the one with the long black beard, I forget. Well, Mansour's in the same ilk, yeah. but whoever it was, like, they, they look for people like you who can't answer their questions so that they can produce content that says, look, another Christian can't answer the questions of the Muslims, <laughs> right? But the very Christians who can answer their questions, they avoid us like the plague. And when we go up to them to debate, they refuse to debate us. So what's that telling you? It is telling, it's telling you, it's telling you that they're intellectually bankrupt. And they have been reduced, the whole of the Dawagandists have been reduced to only debating visitors and tourists. And they can't debate other debaters. Because Islam is intellectually bankrupt. And we Christians in the park were the ones that bankrupted it. I think a lot of Christians as well just aren't really Well, I have, a Mac, I have a rule that I follow, which is if the Muslims don't interrupt me, I don't interrupt them. So, because no Muslim has interrupted me today, I'm not going to go and interrupt Mansour. But if a Muslim were to interrupt me today, then I would feel free to interrupt Mansour. Yeah? But, there you go. Yeah, thanks for your answer. No worries. God bless you.